the humble egg simmered in water and cooked all the way through. Is there a right way to do it? Let's see. Now this isn't a sexy video with some meat sizzling on the grill and some gooey cheese sandwich getting pulled apart. This is a practical video, trying to understand a simple recipe. But I do think that if you're interested in cooking, you're gonna find this as fascinating as I did. So a little backstory. When I was doing some research for the channel, I came across a recipe for hard cooked eggs. This was in America's Test Kitchen's cookbook, and it was wildly different from my method. So it got me wondering, how many methods are there to hard cook an egg? I poured through my cookbooks and I found six methods, and they were all over the place. Then I took to the internet and I found a few more. This surprised me because cooking in near boiling water is a very consistent method of cooking. And eggs are grated, at least here in the States, by the weight of a dozen. A carton of large eggs has to be 24 ounces in the States. And they can vary in size inside the carton, but still, most eggs of the same type are about the same size. So cooking a pretty consistent thing at a pretty consistent temperature should have a defined and preferred way to do it, right? Were some of those cookbooks wrong? Let's find out. I think to start the whole process, we need to close our eyes and try to think of what a perfect hard cooked egg looks like. First, the egg needs to come out of the shell without dimpling or tearing the white. Second, the egg white should be fully cooked and not rubbery. And finally, the yolk should be creamy, cooked all the way through and not dry. The recipes I'll be testing today are from the Food Network, America's Test Kitchen, Julia Child, Samin Nosrat's Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, Professional Cooking by Wayne Gislin, and the Culinary Institute of America's Cookbook. I'll also be using some recipes I found on the internet from Anova and from other sources. Before we start, there's one piece of lore that I want to debunk. For years, I had heard that the age of an egg was the deciding factor on how easy a hard-cooked egg came away from its shell. And I have not found evidence that this is true. Now, as an egg sits, it gets older, and the air inside the air cell in the egg gets larger. But that doesn't necessarily translate to making it easier to peel. To test this, I took a pack of fresh eggs, and I stored it in my fridge for three weeks. Then, I took another carton of eggs that I got that day from the store, and I tried multiple methods of hard cooking them. I found that the method that I used mattered way more than the age of the egg. Now, of course, this is limited testing. I only used two dozen eggs here, and it could have been that the eggs that I bought had sat on the shelf for as long as mine sat on my shelf. So you can try this out yourself and see if I'm wrong. All right, so let's get the methods out of the way that I did not think worked. Sous vide hard cooked eggs are just not good. I tried two methods. The first was from ANOVA, which makes my sous vide recirculator. Cook your eggs at 170 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. This method produced a fine enough yolk as it was cooked all the way through, and it wasn't chalky or dry, but the white on this egg was not as firm as a hard cooked egg normally is. It was jello-y and it was unappetizing. The other sous vide method I found was to cook an egg at 190 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. This one had a fine egg white, but the yolk was hard and dry. So I'm not convinced without some changing of the temperature that you can achieve a hard cooked egg that is palatable in a sous vide. But if you have a recipe, please leave it below. I'm happy to give it a try. Another method that I would consider a failure, and it was a huge shock, was America's Test Kitchen. Their method says to put salt in the water, one tablespoon per two quarts of water, and then add your eggs and bring it to a boil. Take it off the heat and cover the pan and let it sit for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes elapses, put the eggs in an ice bath for five minutes. These were a nightmare to peel, and the final product was not so great that it could withstand being a poorly peeled egg. I wouldn't do them again like this. Another that was hard to peel, but did produce a better tasting egg was the Food Network recipe, which is to put your eggs in cool water in a pot Bring that pot to a boil. Once it boils, cover it and take it off the heat. 
Set a timer for 12 minutes and let it sit. At the 12 minute mark, drain your eggs and then break them. These also had large divots in the white. And while the egg was cooked all the way through and tasted good, it did not come out of its shell very easily. The Culinary Institute of America method is to put your eggs in cool water, bring that water to a simmer and cook for 10 minutes. Peel the eggs immediately. I ran these under cool water and peeled them. And again, these didn't turn out great. While the egg tasted fine, they were hard to get out of their shell. Wayne Gislin wrote the Le Cordon Blue cookbook, and his method is to bring the eggs up to room temperature and then put the eggs in boiling water and simmer for 12 minutes, then run under cold water and peel them. This one was quite good, and even though these didn't cool in a water bath, the eggs came out of the shell easily and the yolks were done 100%. I do think they were a touch chalky, but if I were making deviled eggs, this might be the method I use. The top two were from Salt Fat Acid Heat and Julia Child. Of all the eggs, these both tasted the best and were the easiest to make. Salt Fat Acid Heat says to boil water, add eggs, simmer for nine minutes, and place in an ice water bath, then peel. To be honest, this is the best tasting egg. The yolk is a touch underdone, so that can be an issue. I would cook it for one more minute and it would be fully set. But the flavors and creaminess of this is outstanding and they fall right out of their shells. The same goes for Julia Child's method. Now she hedges her bets by piercing the egg with a pin on the bottom. She also adds salt, which I didn't find did much on the other batch that I made. Both of these books claim that salt water makes eggs easier to peel. She boils her water before adding the salt and then the egg, then cooks it for 12 minutes, breaks the shell, and then rinses that under cold water. This one fell right out of the shell. The yolk was 100% cooked and still creamy, and the egg was also still warm, so if that's a thing you're looking for, I would use Julia's method. So, here's what I found. I found that getting an egg from cold to hot, and then from hot to cold quickly, made peeling that egg so much easier. I also found that timing an egg when it drops into boiling water is much easier than trying to time eggs when they come to a boil with the water because it's just harder to determine when exactly to start the timer. So for me, a 10 minute egg dropped in boiling water with a quick ice bath is the perfect egg. It peels well, tastes creamy, and is perfectly cooked. So tell me, what's your method? What do you do different? I didn't try to steam eggs this episode, so maybe that's a possibility I could try in the future. Leave your preferred method in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe. All it takes is one thumbs up and my video can wind up in somebody else's feed and that helps the channel a whole bunch. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next week. Till then, season liberally.